Hello good people, this is Fisher12 back with another exciting video for you guys today as always and it is Tuesday night so you know what that means, let's talk Smackdown. So the show opened up with a Kevin Owens promo and he was sort of just recapping his victory uh, on Sunday night and AJ Styles comes out to interrupt him and then later we get the return of Y2J, Chris Jericho, drink it in man. Personally, I think it was a tad bit too early. I would have liked to see him be gone for a little bit longer to give us a, a more time to miss him. But I'm thinking that this was just a one-off because I think he's still on tour with Fozzie through the fall. So I don't know if he's back completely full-time in storylines or if he just came back to sort of hype up this match for the AJ win. But one thing I noticed that I thought was really funny is that Kevin Owens looked like an adult standing in the ring with his nice suit and championship. And Shane McMahon, who's supposed to be the commissioner, looks like a straight-up college student in, like, his Jordans, jeans, and, like, white long sleeve t-shirt with the sleeves rolled up. But the point of that segment was to set up a triple threat match for the main event later that night. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles versus Chris Jericho. And we'll talk about that later. But our next match was Baron Corbin versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Nothing says low effort like a pay-per-view rematch. I'm not sure what the point of this was other than to maybe put Nakamura over so he had a reason to face John Cena. More or less, it was really 50-50 booking in my eyes. Nakamura had won both matches, the one on Battleground and this one on Tuesday. But after the one on Battleground, the story that they were telling was that Baron was the one walking away from the encounter. So even though he didn't win the match, he was victorious in the encounter, so to speak, if that makes sense. But Shinsuke Nakamura getting his revenge tonight. I'm honestly tired of this feud, so it's nice that he's facing John Cena, and I have a hunch on where I think that feud's going, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Next, we had Charlotte and Becky Lynch versus Tamina and Lana. And this was just an okay match. I mean, I don't really know if you expected anything better from this match. The crowd was chanting, you can't wrestle at Lana. And in my opinion, like, I think maybe those chants are warranted during a title shot match on a pay-per-view where she shouldn't be. But if she's like on SmackDown learning to wrestle, like, don't chant, you can't wrestle. Obviously, we all know she can't wrestle. She's here trying to learn to wrestle. I get the case if like she's put into a position and a title opportunity in a match that she doesn't deserve. But in a tag match like this, like, I don't really think the chants were that warranted. But one thing I can't understand is why Tamina is teaming or siding or with Lana. The pairing just makes no sense. Lana doesn't offer anything to Tamina, and in my opinion, she's cost her matches. But Tamina is the one who decided out of the blue to side with Lana, so I don't understand what story they're getting at. Tamina is disappointed and angry that Lana keeps costing her matches, but it kind of seems like it's all your fault because you decided to side with Lana. No one asked you to. Lana didn't ask you to. So I'm not really sure where this feud is going or what where the storyline is going. Then we had a Jinder Mahal promo. Jinder really wasn't saying much, just recapping what happened on Sunday. And one thing I thought was interesting is that his Indian promo or his Punjabi prom promo, he mentioned John Cena. So if you didn't know that John Cena was going to come out to interrupt him, you definitely knew when he dropped his name. But when Cena comes out, he challenges Jinder to a match at SummerSlam and says Super Cena is going to show up. So he's definitely going to win. And I thought that was just, I thought that was a funny line. And at the end, he's like, hit the trumpets, I'm leaving. But Daniel Bryan comes out, interrupts him, and sets up a number one contenders match. John Cena versus Shinsuke Nakamura next week. I'm honestly... I don't know what's going to happen with that match because you figure Cena saying that he's Super Cena and, and him coming back, he should get the win. But if Nakamura gets the loss, then you're really adding to the lackluster that has been Nakamura since he's arrived on the main roster. Next, we had Aiden English and Mike Kanellis versus Sami Zayn and Ty Dillinger. I thought this was a decent match. It was a little short, honestly. I was enjoying what everyone was doing individually. I thought Aiden English was doing good. Mike Kanellis was performing better than he had in his previous two matches. I thought the hot tag and the finish were phenomenal. The finish was especially phenomenal. Sammy gets the hot tag and then runs right behind Ty Dillinger for the Hulova kick. It was good. Honestly, like I said, it was too short. I wish it had gone on longer. Next, we had the New Day Championship Celebration, which... Never really happened because they were attacked by the Usos, I guess. I don't... 
you don't really see backstage, so you don't know what the setup is with Big E and the New Day, but I have a very hard time believing that if all three of them are back there in Gorilla, getting ready to come out, all of a sudden, the Usos can take all three of them down. That doesn't make any sense. The idea is that you're supposed to have numbers and that you're supposed to be able to outpower the other teams. If you get beaten by a pair of two who are significantly smaller than all three of the New Day, it really doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't believe it. I don't buy it. Maybe the average fan does, but it, it didn't get a pass with me. And then we had our main event, the United States Championship match, Chris Jericho versus AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens. I thought this was a pretty good match. It started off a little slow, and I thought that Jericho definitely had some ring rust, which is to be expected because he's been on tour and not wrestling, and I don't even know if he's been working out, but the match had a great finish, bunch of back and forths, bunch of false finishes that you thought could be the actual finish. Kevin Owens hits a frog splash, which is in my opinion, better than everyone else's frog splash on the roster. Sasha Banks did one on Monday, and it really didn't look like a frog splash. Kevin Owens hit a frog splash. It looked like a frog splash. He had the contraction of the arms and then the extension of the arms as he's coming down for the splash, you know. It's, it's probably harder than it looks, but in my opinion, it should be very easy to hit a frog splash. And of course, the victory here for AJ Styles pretty much confirmed what everyone's been talking about, that... Kevin Owens' victory on Sunday shouldn't have happened and that something went wrong in that match or something didn't happen in that match that should, that got him the title and them putting it back on AJ tonight pretty much proves that something went wrong. Even though there is a rematch, Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles next week, I'm expecting AJ Styles to win and I assume AJ Styles will then go on to feud with whoever loses the Cena versus Nakamura match because whoever wins that match is going to go face Jinder at SummerSlam, so I'm predicting the loser to face AJ Styles at SummerSlam, although maybe it's Rusev. We didn't really hear from Rusev. Maybe they do uh, AJ Styles versus Rusev at SummerSlam. I don't know. But overall, I thought this was a good show. One theme that I am noticing between this week's SmackDown and this week's Raw is that they seem to have more of a direction with where these storylines are going because they're able to announce a handful of matches for the upcoming week, so you know what you're going to see when you tune in, and I gotta assume that's going to improve ratings when you know what you're going to see, you have a reason to tune in, so it's just a slight change that I'm noticing, but I think it's a good direction that WWE is heading in right now. But those are my thoughts on this week's SmackDown. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this week's SmackDown. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What was your favorite match? Least favorite match? Ways that it can be improved? Let me know in the comments down below. And that will unfortunately bring us to the end of today's video. So if you enjoyed it and want to see more, make sure to click on that subscribe button. But other than that, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and take care.